All righty, guys, let's start again. So we'll quickly discuss basic about Turing laws. I hope you guys know it well. So what is tuning fork test and how it is done? I have not seen questions coming up about the procedure, but yes, you have to analyze the results and interpret what kind of Turing laws it is. So very quickly, we have two kinds of test uh, in tuning fork test, Rennie's and Weber test. So in Rennie's, usually the tuning, vibrating tuning fork is first placed on the mastoid process. And once the sound cannot be, or the vibration cannot be appreciated over there, then it is kept in front, just outside the ear to test the air and bone conduction. For Weber's, we usually keep it initially in the middle and then uh, we ask the patient to, to tell us where the vibrations are going. If it's equidistance or if it is lateralizing to one side or if it is going towards the other side. Now, hearing loss can be of two types, conductive and sensineural hearing loss. Conductive hearing loss occurs when there is any problem in the pathway of the conduction of the sound, which could be in the ear canal, eardrum or up to the middle ear. Sensineural when something related to the to the nerves or the pathway which is taking these sensations from the ear to the brain or perception of in the perception of the brain so it can be auditory nerve hear cells in the ear in a in a ear or it could be any other part of the cochlea so conductive and sensorineural hearing loss now what causes conductive hearing loss so as you know anything which is obstructing the conduction even ear wax any foreign object any damage or perforation of the eardrum any bone abnormality, cholecystoma, or even acuretitis media can lead to conductive hearing loss. What causes sensineural hearing loss? So, advanced age, presbycusis, disorders, trauma, menial disease, ototoxic medications, which are affecting the neural pathway. Any of these can lead to sensineural hearing loss. Now, these are few charts. If you want to interpret the results from this, which will detail you what will happen if it is a normal ear when there is no problem what happens in normal ear air conduction is more than bone conduction so that should be seen in both the ears and Weber should be in the midline but if conductive hearing loss occurs what will happen if sensorineural hearing loss occur what will happen and if there is a mixed hearing loss what will happen so you can give it a read from this chart or this is just another way but I'll um, I'll detail you my way of doing it with the help of a mnemonic if that can help help you easily to figure out the answer in few seconds uh, then you can use that mnemonic or else these charts will definitely help you so we'll first do few questions and then i'll let you know how to uh to you know just quickly answer these questions so we'll start with the first one a 65 year old woman presents with progressive work worsening deafness over the past six months she finds hearing particularly difficult in a noisy environment. She thinks the right ear is more affected than the left. Hearing te tests are done, but the results are as follows. Hearing of whispered voice appears diminished on both sides. Rennie's were done and air conduction with bone conduction. The results shows that air conduction is better than bone, bone conduction on both sides. In performing a Weber's, Weber lateralizes when a tuning fork is placed on the vertex. She feels the sound is better in the left ear or it is lateralizing more towards the left ear. So what is the most likely cause of her deafness? So first you have to, in these kinds of questions, looking at the history and the tuning fork test results, you have to first understand whether this is a conductive hearing loss or a sensineural hearing loss. And once you figure out that it is conductive or sensineural, then go and find out the causes. So is it presbycusis, wax, acoustic neuroma, or osteosclerosis? So first we have to identify is this conductive or sensineural. So yeah, this is sensineural kind of hearing loss because the air conduction is greater than bone conduction, which appears normal. When this is normal, ideally if it would be a normal hearing ear, Weber should be in the midline. It should not lateralize anywhere. If it is lateralizing, that means this is false positive, which is coming out. Um, this is sensineural hearing loss. And in this case, we have to find out the cause of sensineural hearing loss. So wax in the external ear or otosclerosis causes conductive hearing loss. 
both press biquses and acoustic neuroma can cause sensory neural hearing loss but in the history we are not getting anything which can give us a direction toward acoustic neuroma but definitely in an elderly female press biquses is something which can occur which is an age related pathology which can occur in these elderly which can cause sensory neural hearing loss so yes the answer here is press biquses next question a 25 year old woman present with progressive deafness over the past few months was in her right ear she is currently pregnant with her first child at 6 month of gestation her antenatal progress so far has been good she has had some associated mild tinnitus she has noted that she can hear better in noisy surrounding her mother also had a hearing problem hearing tests are performed with following results bone conduction is better than air conduction in the right ear and also in the left ear on doing webers tuning folk result shows that she hears the sound better in the right ear so on brinis bone conduction is better than air conduction and in webers the the tuning folk results are lateralizing towards the right ear so they are asking you what is the interpretation conductive deafness in both ears particularly on the right sensorineural deafness in both ears particularly on the right conductive in right only sensorineural in right or sensorineural in left only so first let's figure out whether this is conductive or sensorineural hearing loss so these are the results which you will see in cases of um, conductive and sensory neural hearing loss as we have read that in normal scenario renees will be air conduction will be greater than bone conduction and weber should be midline this is why we do the do both of the tests together and not just one because in sensory neural hearing loss air conduction is better than bone conduction and it is a false positive result so both the test results need to be interpreted together now if it is a conductive hearing loss that means there is some problem with the conduction and that is why in these cases the rini test result is bone conduction greater than air conduction so there is only one possibility of bone conduction greater than air conduction which is conductive hearing loss otherwise if it is normal or if it is a sensory neural hearing loss you will see air conduction greater than bone conduction and how to remember this or how to not get confused because obviously you can apply your logics but in the in the in the in the exam anxiety and in that crunch of time we we tend to even not trust our own logics and um, thinking so it's always better to make some mnemonics now one way of remembering is you can remember it like this so abc is the usual abcd which we read and that is why air conduction is always better than bone conduction in normal cases and if it is conductive hearing loss bone conduction will be greater than air conduction so normal is normal your abc that is abcd which you read is the norm the opposite will be conductive hearing loss now coming to the webers test webers is midline in normal cases webers lateralizes to the bad ear in cases of conductive hearing loss bad ear is the ear which is you know you can have hearing loss in both the ears but there is some there is definitely one ear which is more um uh, one which is good and one which is bad the bad one hears less as compared to the other one so in conductive hearing loss weber lateralizes to the bad ear whereas in sensory neural hearing loss it lateralizes to the good ear so how can you remember this so you can just remember it with the help of this now this is the short form of sensory neural hearing loss so in sensory neural hearing loss weber l is lateralizes towards the normal or the good ear so in sensory neural hearing loss if it is lateralizing towards the normal or towards the good ear then in conductive hearing loss it will lateralize towards the bad ear now this is my way of remembering this and framing a mnemonic you can frame your own but do make one for this because you don't want to waste time in exam for these kinds of question now we go back to the question which we have in the question 
bone conduction was greater than air conduction. So this is a case of conductive hearing loss where bone conduction is greater than air conduction. And when we have options like this in right ear, left ear, both ears, then sensorineural hearing loss will help us, uh, sorry, the Weber's results with, will help us figure out which ear is good ear and which ear is bad ear. In the question, it says that the Weber lateralizes towards the right ear. And we know in conductive hearing loss, Weber lateralizes towards the bad ear or the ear which hears less. That means in this case, in this pregnant female, both right and left ear has problem. And if you go back and look at the history, she is a pregnant female and with family history. So most likely, this is a case of otosclerosis, which gets aggravated during pregnancy. So that's likely what is happening over here. Now, it is in the this problem is occurring in both the ears. And that is why in both ears, we are seeing bone conduction greater than air conduction. Now, when we do the Weber test, in conductive hearing loss, Weber will lateralize more towards the bad ear. So in this particular scenario, her left ear is good ear and right ear is bad ear. Left ear has more earning capacity as compared to the right ear. But deafness is definitely there in both ears. So in this case, the answer would be conductive deafness in both ears, but particularly on the right ear.